This segment is brought to you by GoToAssist. So why, why Kismet? <laughs> why Kismet, like, the entire project? Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, you know, it's been going on for forever, and it's, like, the de facto standard. Like, what? Since 2001. Yeah. Um, and and what, was NetStumbler even around? There was NetStumbler. There was nothing for Linux. Yeah. Uh, there was AirSnort. Yeah. Vaguely remember The precursor that. to yeah. AirSnort. Uh, I think the project name's been taken over again, but I mean, the precursor to AirSnort, back when the Shmoo guys did it. Oh. When they first started doing it. And I picked that up, and I started looking at the packet dumps, and I got it to put the SSID on the screen and said that's great and I sent it to them and they said we're not really maintaining the project anymore <laughs> and you're like cool now I am no no it wasn't I mostly forked off from Airsnort and then I got a Cisco card and the Cisco cards didn't work the same way as the Prism 2 because the Prism 2 then used Netlink right not standard packets yeah back then everybody was like uh, Orinoco that's the only way to go yeah, I think Orinoco... <laughs> I don't remember ever having an Orinoco at that point. I think I got one a couple years later. Yeah, th at the point that was like the equivalence of having uh, like an Etheros or something, you know? Yeah. Um, so the Cisco worked differently, so then I had to make code that worked with both of them. So I figured, well, if I'm going to do it once, I'll do it for modular. Yeah, And yeah. then slapped a UI on it, and then that was that. Yeah. Was it curses to begin with? Oh, yeah. It was always curses. Yeah. And it still is, because I hate all the GUI frameworks. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'm, I'm actually wondering why there hasn't been, like, a, has there been a GUI front end that I just haven't there seen? There's been a bunch, and none of them really took off. Mm. Um, there's th there are a bunch of them are linked off the links page on Kismet now, uh, on the website. There were There's a QT one. I think there's been a, two GTK ones. And I've actually been talking with someone now about what might be the most interesting path to take, which would be... Uh, WebSockets and JavaScript. Oh, just do everything in the browser. Yeah. That's hot. In fact, con considering there's like a client and a server in the whole architecture of Kismet, you could like have one remote and just. Yeah. In fact, at that point, ooh, dude, Chrome on your on your Android phone. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty much a major driving factor of that was being able to do mobile display, and then with the hacking I've been trying to do to get Kismet running native on Android. Oh, so you're actually doing a native Android like like host mode USB plug in the card, or is this like just Wi-Fi it to your laptop or Bluetooth it to your laptop and do everything there? This was uh, so you can, if you're slightly crazy, get the kernel drivers running in host mode in Java on Android in the Android framework without rooting the phone. So is it like most of those Android hacks where it's like, okay, so stand this way and and point your elbow towards the moon. That's why it's not released yet. Yeah. Because right now, Galaxy Nexus uh, Alpha, the original Alpha. Yeah, the, the Realtek. Um, oh, the 11B. The 8187. So, oh, I thought the 8187 was G. Yeah, the Realtek 8187. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Yeah. Huh. And so any, any plans for that? Once it's more stable. It was the first Android program I'd pretty much written. I love this. The first Android program you ever write, and it's Kismet, you know, working in host mode with an awesome uh, chipset. Your first PCB, you know, does wicked man in the middle attacks. Like, <laughs> have you ever sucked at anything? If you look at what I've written on Android for Kismet, it sucks. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> but conceptually. <laughs> what really happened with it? Was like, I'm wondering if there was, like, a, a just... Like a, a little drag worn one day that wrote Hello World, or was it all like native assembly, you know, bootstrappers, first line, you know, first, uh, first program? Uh, my first computer was a TI 99, uh, plugged into the TV, one of those old ones, right after TI stopped making them. I was about to say, you don't look that old. No, no, this was after TI stopped manufacturing those computers, <laughs> so it was 
here's a magazine with basic if you want to do something this is this is the only thing that you know i believe in that truly uh you know my mom couldn't afford to get me a 486 so i ended up with a pc xt you know 512k of ram and again like dos 33 you want to play a game right in basic and that's the way to do it yeah yeah so yeah that kind of bootstrap things that's awesome and so just because air snort or not air snort um air, air yeah air snort wasn't uh maintaining anymore you're just like okay but why kismet why why the name kismet i'm sure you've been asked that a million times but what does that mean uh the story is not that good i pretty much took stumbler from netstumbler because i wanted some correlation because uh-huh. they did similar things plugged it into like dictionary.com and just kept hitting synonyms <laughs> and after like 15 clicks of of random synonym things it wasn't i don't even remember what the chain was it hit kismet and i did a quick look online and there were no other projects named that and i went okay good enough <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> i love that in fact now i want to like take shakespeare and take every single word and run it through 15 iterations of dictionary.com huh okay so there was a was it a massive rewrite or just massive architecture change just recently with kismet tell me something about that so there's been, this is now the third major architecture change. The first one was uh, was about five, six years ago, making uh, everything more modular, making plugins happen, making the UI uh, much friendlier so you don't have to remember, you know, magic keys. And that, that was what allowed us to do things like the Ubertooth 1 plug into Kismet because there was that module system in there. And so now what's the focus? Uh, now the focus is to make Kismet not 802.11 focused anymore. It'll be uh, uh, any anything that can generate consistent packets you can identify will will integrate. So give me some possible scenarios, some examples of something that, that Kismet might be able to decode and capture and everything. So actually a big push on that was the Ubertooth, where uh, with the current framework that's, that, that's in the release code, uh, a plugin for a different PHY uh, a different physical layer could do, uh, like the deck stuff or the Ubertooth or whatnot, um, has to implement their own GPS handling. They have to implement their own XML files. They have to implement uh, GUI plugins to display the list of networks independent of the list of 802.11 networks. So if you're running like three different types of cards, you end up with very little screen real estate left. Um, so with the new architecture, you pretty much go, I handle Bluetooth, define a physical layer for it. Uh, I want it in a PCAP file, and that happens automatically. And you fill in the basic information that you can, and that goes in the XML file. And then you can actually do XML namespace expansion and have basically XML plugins in the capture file. So you have a fully schemed uh, XML definition of arbitrary file layer captures. And so given that, what uh, what different physical layers and what different like protocols and, and frequencies and stuff have you seen actually implemented now with this? Well, it's still, it, it, I haven't had a full release of it yet. Mm-hmm. So, but right now, um, Ubertooth, uh, there's a plugin for that that works with the new file layer already. Uh, I'm working on the Zigbee plugin now. Um, I should hopefully have time to go back and update the Deck plugin to work with it. Um, I was looking at Travis Goodspeed's uh, keyboard detection code. Oh, wow. For is that, that. Now, is that like 25 megahertz or 900 or what, what is that? forget what oh uh, no i uh, know what it is it's uh the one i'm thinking of it's it's the 2.4 nordic rf oh wow that is so cool and so since you just you understand the protocol in it it's challenging enough when your team is working from the same office and even more so if you're supporting members who work remotely that's why you need GoToAssist assist by citrix you can take control of your entire it world from one simple cloud-based platform with GoToAssist, assist you can keep all of your systems up and running while keeping all of your users supported provide live or unattended support from anywhere even from your ipad and with GoToAssist assist monitoring you get customizable dashboards displaying performance of all networks servers and desktops Plus, proactive alerting allows you to fix small issues before they become big problems, so you look like a hero. I use GoToAssist to help my family with their computer troubles, and I wouldn't want to do remote support without it. Check it out today. You'll love it. You can get your special 30-day free trial today. Just head over to GoToAssist.com and click Try It Free and use the promo code HAK5. That's GoToAssist.com with promo code HACK5.